everyone it's daddy coco man and today i'm going to talk about uh, the solution to a challenge that i'd written for hack method uh, last quarter that was the winter of 2017. a lot of people have been asking me to uh, make a video or just some sort of solution because a lot of people found it really difficult uh, so hack method is a website um, that has quarterly ctf challenges uh, you can win prizes as, as noted here um, and it's a lot of cool prizes a lot from a, a raspberry pi or a no starch press and uh last quarter we had a couple difficult uh challenges um so we've been talking about this one holy hell i originally called it packet hell it was changed to holy hell I'm not really sure why um oh fixer upper i wonder what that xxe stands for hmm anyway so yeah so we're gonna talk about the solution we're gonna show the challenge and and describe actually two different ways to solve it one using python and one just using the terminal uh a shell terminal so the challenge that i made looks like this Ooh, there we go it's about i think a lot of packets i think about twenty thousand packets um even more than that it's three hundred thousand <laughs> that was way off but three hundred thousand packets uh total and a lot of people were having trouble like going through all these packets and trying to figure out what was going on with them all right so one of the first things you should do um when you come when it comes to ctfs right you should always look for things that stand out especially in packet captures now all of these if you were to look at them even if you just scroll through for a little while you'll notice that all the tcp packets are sin packets to port 80 um arbitrary destination um all the udp packets are 69 yeah and all the icmp packets are uh echo requests right so if i if i filter in tcp uh, that might actually excuse me, my headphone cut out that was weird all right so uh all the uh all the packets are like 80 80 80 80 80 80 and nothing really of interest there same for udp and icmp some of the things that other people did were ooh, let's hide that for a bit there we go um they looked for you know random packets or uh, hidden packets that might have been in there right so they may have gone http or excuse me http looking for random protocols uh that would not have gotten you anywhere it, all the packets are straight up tcp udp and icmp packets so one of the first things you should do is look actually inspect the packets right so if i go uh to you know looking at the first packet right uh What's here? Uh, what catches your eye? Probably nothing. Um, it's just random pack. It looks looks fairly normal. Um, but if you go down to the next one, you'll notice that some bytes changed. One of those bytes changed here, here, and here. All right. So check this out right there, right there. Change changes every every time. Now, if you know packet analysis, uh, you'll know that the first one is the source port. And if Wireshark will tell you that is the source port right there, if you, you know, if you ask it. Uh, the other one that changes is the checksum. Uh, the checksum changes. Every packet, every packet, the checksum changes. Same goes for the UDP ports, right? Um, the UDP checksum changes every packet. And it's literally the only thing that changes other than the source port, of course. And for the ICMP, uh, it actually tells you that the ICMP checksum is incorrect. Now, ICMP does have a, a checksum. Um, uh, it, it has a way to verify its checksum. And this should have been like a huge red flag saying, oh, this checksum is incorrect, right? You notice that there's no data in, in the ICMP uh, packet. And if you look at the next one, there's also no data. But the, you notice that the checksum is different. So why would that be, right? Uh, the source port Oh, there, are, there is no source for it. Ha 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 ha, ICMP. Um, right, it's different. So why would that be different? So let, let's go back to the beginning, right? So and we're looking at it, we know that the checksums are are wrong, they're incorrect, or they're suspicious, I should say, right? So maybe I want to check them out. Maybe I want to set my checksum and open that up. Now, off the bat, some people may automatically recognize what's going on here. Um, and you'll see that the, the checksum for UDP and, and ICMP isn't shown, but that's fine. Um, automatically, you'll see 89504E47. Uh, what does that mean to people? 
probably the average person, probably nothing. But if you know your magic headers, and those are file headers, then you know that 8950-4E-47. Right? And I believe 0D is also part of that as well. Um, are the actual uh, the magic headers for PNG files. And you can verify that because you notice that as I go through, P, N, G. So what does that mean? It means that most likely all of these packets have a checksum that is a byte of a PNG file. That's, I mean, if, if I were looking at this, I, I would notice that I didn't see that. And so, of course, I mean, I don't know, I also wrote it, so whatever. But, um, you'll see that, right? You'll, and then you'll see a whole bunch of other bytes everywhere. Now, there's two ways to approach this. Getting all the checksums out and being able to view them. Um, so we're going to go the first way, which is the Python way. And it's actually how I generated uh, all these packets was with Python. Um, I, I made a, well, well, we'll see what happens when I get there. All right, so here we have the solution, um, just straight up given to you. Um, so we see from scapey.all, we import you know, everything. And I'm using Python 2.7. Um, and then we read the PCAP. You make a string to store all of the checksum data. And then we go, well, for each packet in the packets in the PCAP, if it has a layer of TCP, I want to take the TCP checksum and add it to the string with some formatting. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, if the later, else if the uh, layer, if the uh, the packet has a layer of UDP, take that checksum, and ISMP take that checksum. Scapy is very very powerful tool, um, and you can use it to manipulate almost any packet. And there are a lot of a lot of uh, additions that people have made. Uh, for example. There's one for HTTP that will actually pull out HTTP responses and replies and parse those out for you. You have to download it independently of, of Scapey, but, but it is an option. Um, and then once we get all the strings, we know that they're uh, the bytes of a, you know, they're bytes of, of an image. So we turn that string into a byte array, and then we write those bytes to a file in PNG format because we know that it's PNG based on those headers. So, um, I'm going to run this and then talk about this formatting for a bit. Uh, notice output.png, there is no output.png here. So when it pops up, we'll know that, uh, that the script has completed. All right. So onto the string formatting. Now, you notice in Wireshark, we have 89504E470D. Um, if you were to extract these checksums by themselves, you'd get 0x0089, 0x0050, 0x blah 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 and so on and so forth. Those are not proper bytes for a a PNG header, right? You just want these 89504E47. And when I was trying to create the the solution for this, um, I came across some issues. So one, I am taking the uh, the TCP checksum or the I, or whatever checksum, the packet checksum, I'll just call it that, and I am converting it and saying display as hex, right? So it may display something like, um, I'll just put it here, uh, 0x0089, right? That's the the first packet. And I wanted you to add the 0x represented in hex. And then this says, I want the width of it to only be 4. So that means that the entire width of the string should only be 4 characters, right? If I were to increase this to 5, I'd actually get this. If I increase it to six, oh, and the, the packet is done. So if I increase it to six, it would actually be that. Uh, we don't want those extra extra things in there. And then I say, I, I want to string slice this, right? And I want to take the two, uh, starting from uh, index two and to the end of the string, that's what I want to append. So counting here, zero, one, here's two. So start here and the rest of the string. So what you really get is just eight, nine, in the packet. The same thing goes for UDP, same thing goes for ICP. When you pull those checksums out, they're full hex, and we don't want that. We want to slice it down to what it needs to be, and then we add those to those strings. So then um, here's the output, and it is a nice picture of some cocoa right in the background, and the flag is H, uh, HMCTF OMG the packets exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Um, and there you have it. That's how you solve it. Now I'll show you the, the, 
the way I generated it was fairly simple, right? I took I took in a picture, I read all the bytes, right, in binary, and then I just randomly distributed uh, each byte into a packet header, right? It's it's an interesting way to exfil if that's what you wanted to do. It's really noisy, obviously. I mean, the file for uh, for packet hell small is well three hundred thousand bytes exactly one byte per per packet right um that's pretty messy i could have made it two bytes per packet but i really wanted to like not have people try to do this by hand that did a similar ctf um and i only had about 100 packets and someone actually did it by hand that was a messy so in order to avoid that i made you know put a whole bunch of data in that file with the background and and made it way bigger right and, and that's all it does so uh, take the take the bytes distribute them equally all right so now we're going to talk about the um now we have this right we're going to talk about the other way to do it uh and that's in bash all right so if you're not familiar with t-shark that is a way to um t-shark is a way to to view pcaps um, and you can actually filter on fields and all that stuff right so if i went uh t-shark dot r held that pcap and I say I want to check the fields right uh, TCP check some then you see all that that nonsense printing out right here's all this we don't want this right I mentioned before here's the entire field that's not what we want but I can actually check out um, like e ICMP dot check some and UDP dot checksum. Now, what this is going to be interesting, right? So you notice it prints out TCP. Uh, TCP, ICMP, and UDP in that order. Uh, we don't want this formatting because the idea is to take every single output and um, take all these bytes and to put them into a file right write them to a file so that's messy so we're going to use this cool little one-liner um that i found stack overflow right uh <laughs> for um, removing all the spaces a little, a little awk magic i'm not fully caught up in awk but uh it's one way to do it right so now if i run this notice they're all even length right so that's Awk, dollar sign one equal dollar sign one, semicolon one. Um, but now I have another problem because I still have the same problem where the the byte length is too long, right? I need to cut that down, and of course I'm going to use the cut command, right? So I know I'm going to cut down these characters, and I know zero or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I want characters nine and ten of each one, so nine. To 10. I run that. There we go. That looks a little better, right? But still, now each one is printing out with a new line at the end. If you can't see it, there's a new line character. So in order to get rid of those new lines, now I need to uh, trim it down and remove the new line character because I don't want those. Those are bad, right? You don't want new lines in your for after every byte in your uh, in your 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 data, right? That's it's not good. So there, there we go. Those are like real, real bytes, right? If I, you know, less it, you'll see that I still have the, the headers here, right? It's eight nine, uh, five zero four e four seven. But of course, this is still a string, um, and writing a string to a file just puts the string in the file. That's not what we want. So we'll use the xxd command. We'll uh, reverse it which means uh, take this string and then make it, you know, data and we'll run that. There we go. Now that's, that's PNG data. And of course I should less that to show you. We now have a PNG file, ladies and gentlemen. So take that PNG file. Whoops. Yeah. Broke the pipe. Um, excuse me. Oh, error message. Take that file and we output it to, you know, we'll say bash output dot png let that run 
shouldn't take too long. There we go, done. That was actually faster than the uh, the the Python version of having to read the entire pcap, right? Um, but yeah, so now we have bash output.png, and of course we have the same file, um, fully formed, and uh, with the the solution. So that's it for uh, holy hell uh, on hackmethod.com. Um, I hope you enjoyed this challenge. Uh, I may create, I may be creating more challenges in the future uh, if I have you know the time to do it to do so. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up. Um, my Twitter is not Daddy Coco Man. Right? Hit me up at MC Oh My. Uh, or if you want to check out my blog, if you're not reading it from there. Uh, DaddyCocoMan.com. So hit me up if you have any questions, and I'll try to help you out. Thanks.